this is Scott with Learn to Stop Hunger, and today we're going to talk about how to create a quick mock-up using Paint.net. I've already done a tutorial video on creating a mock-up with pencil, and sometimes I'll use uh, a program such as Paint or Paint.net as an alternative option for creating mock-ups. Paint and Paint.net are really for, at least in my mind, I use them for uh, a quick and dirty mock-up for maybe one screen. Uh, whereas if I want to do a mock-up of a full application or maybe just like, you know, uh, even just a module within an application, maybe a couple of screens, I would use Pencil instead. So anyway, today I want to show you um, how I use Paint.net just to do a simple uh, one screen update mock-up. So Paint.net is actually very similar to uh, MS Paint that comes with Windows, but you know it's got some nice additional features. If you go ahead and search in your favorite search engine for Paint.net, you'll find it here at, um, let's see, actually, I'm not so sure about this first listing, probably wouldn't go with that. What you'll want to go is this Get Paint.net, so it's Paint.net free software for digital photo editing. So you want to go to that site. Um, you're going to go ahead and click download. And then I will say this is one of those sites where they've got some of those tricky download links that are really kind of advertisement links. So you got to be careful about that. The one that you're going to want is to come down here and click on this download now link. which of course brings you to another screen where you've got various advertisements. But this is the one that I've done before, right here. This ends up downloading a zip file and you're going to want to extract that zip file out to your hard drive and then go ahead and run the install. So now I believe my download is its very close to complete completing. Now I'll say open when done. Okay. What you can see here is we've got our zip file. And then what you want to do is go ahead and run this install.exe. And that's going to do the installation. It's a pretty typical Windows installer. You know, just hit the next button. I'm trying to remember, uh, you know, many of these free programs will actually prompt you to install toolbars and other items. So my recommendation for this program and for other programs is to carefully examine the options on each of the screens as you hit next to make sure that you don't install anything that you don't want installed on your computer. So now once you've got paint.net installed, you can go ahead and launch it. But the first thing that I want to do is take a screenshot of an existing screen that I want to modify. That's typically where I'll use paint.net. I'll use it when I already have an existing system and I want to go ahead and make a small modification to that system. So here I've got a contact form on an existing website and what I want to do is to be able to add a radio button to this form to ask did you enjoy your visit to the site? Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of my web browser window, and you do that by holding the Alt key and then hitting Print Screen. And that was a <laughs> Dropbox related window, which if you don't have Dropbox installed, you're not going to see that on there. But now we'll go ahead and bring up Paint.net. And I've already done a copy, so let's do a paste and go ahead and do expand canvas if it asks. So now you can see that I've got my form here in the window. And for right now, I'm not going to need this colors window. And I probably don't really need history either or layers. So I'm going to go ahead and close those out. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a radio button in here. Um, first thing I'm going to do 
I'm going to clear out some room so I can kind of move us down. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I just used the selection tool, highlighted the area I wanted to delete, and I pressed the delete key. Now, let's say that I want to go ahead and fill this area with white. Actually, what I can do, or I'm going to use my same background color. You would use this color picker. Go ahead and click on that and grab, click here on the background to get your background color. Now that's your selected color. Let me bring the colors window back up. It's going to be a better illustration. So you can see, let's say that red was my, or pink was my selected color. I go ahead and use this, pick the color picker, and then click on an area of the screen, and it selects white because it's my background color. Now I can go ahead and use this paint bucket to fill in this area. So you can see that's filled in. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to create some room on my form. And you know this is just a, a very rough mock-up so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to highlight that area. Now I'm going to do move selected pixels. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're going to do this so that we can free up some room on the screen for a new radio button. Okay? Let's say that we we want to make this look a little bit nicer, more seamless. We want to go ahead and copy. We would select this Oops, that's actually not going to work. Okay, I select this highlighted area, okay, because I want to reproduce that line down here in this area where it's blank. I'm going to go up and do an edit copy, and then I'm going to do edit paste. And if you know the keyboard shortcuts, that's an even better way, but it's harder to demonstrate in a video. And I go ahead and move that into place. All right, now I'm going to come over on this side and do the same thing use my selector, do your edit copy, and then edit paste, and then I'll go ahead and move my red line on down. Okay, now I've already got my background color selected, so let's just grab this paint bucket, and that did nothing. The reason is because I've got a selected area right now highlighted. I'm going to grab this rectangle select again and just click once somewhere on the screen and that unselects everything. Now I'm going to grab my paint bucket again and fill in this area with the background color. So now you can see I've got a nice gap in here that I can add um, a new field. And actually I will want to I gotta select a color for my text. I was going to add some text there but I gotta select the color what we're going to want to do, um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect to make it look kind of close though. I'm going to focus in here. I'm going to use my color picker and grab this gray color. Okay, you can see I've got gray right there. And now I'm going to select my text tool. Come over here and type in my field name, which was. Did you enjoy your visit? All right, so there's my field name. And now the next thing I'm going to need, I am going to need a radio button that I can paste in here. Now I could use the tools to actually draw these. I've got kind of an I've got an ellipse tool here that might not be too bad and then that combined with the text tool. I could probably draw that pretty easily. It wouldn't be too tough. But there's an even easier way that we can do this, and I'm going to show you. If I go back to my web browser, I'm going to open up a new tab, and from my favorite search engine, I will search for HTML form examples. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me examples of various controls that I can have in a form and I'm going to go ahead and copy information from this 
this page, actually I passed it, okay, so I'm looking for a radio button, and I'm going to go ahead and click in here so I've got a highlighted radio button and an unhighlighted one. I can use both of those. So once again, to take a screenshot of my web browser, I'm going to hold the Alt key and hit Print Screen, and I've got this Dropbox message that comes up, which if you get that, just say no thanks, but chances are you won't get it unless you have Dropbox installed. Now I'm going to bring paint.net up again, and what I want to do for the moment is I'm going to create a new document, and this is just going to be one I'm going to throw away, then I'm going to do edit, paste, okay, so I've got all my, I've got my screenshot right there, okay, now this is what I want to grab, these radio buttons, and you know, they won't look exactly like the controls on my other screen, but that's okay, it'll be close enough for the purposes of the mock-up. So what I'm going to do, I've used the selection tool and selected this, now I'm going to do edit, copy, and then in order to switch back to your other document, you, your other graphic, just click on the picture of it up here at the top of paint.net. Alright, so here we are, and this area right here is where I want my radio button, so I'm going to go ahead and say edit, paste, Okay, and I'm going to close out the color window there. You'll use this Move Selected Pixel tool to actually move the item. And I'm going to move it into place here. And then I'm going to unselect everything, and actually I will select where this is mail, and I'm going to delete that text. I'm going to use my uh, paintbrush again. Oops and I actually did the wrong color there so and it's also not a paint <laughs> the paint bucket is what I meant to say um, so I'm going to use my picker to pick this background color again and then I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with my white okay so now what I want to do is enter my text and I still have the white text selected um, which is not what I'm wanting I want to take this color picker and get black I need to see that color window again to make sure I got the right color. And no, it looks like I got a purple somehow. Let's try this again. Looks like I may need to take a closer look to get a proper color. Alright, so let's go ahead and use the color picker and grab my black. Alright. Now, can also, other than using this control to zoom in and zoom out, you've got controls up here, so I can hit this minus button and zoom out. Alright, so I already have my color selected, so I'm going to go ahead, click right here with my text tool, and say yes. Alright, now, the next thing that I want to do is go back to my other document, my other graphic, click back on the picture here, and I want to use my selection tool to select the, actually, I only want the radio button, that's all I want, so I'm going to pick the un, uh, unhighlighted radio button. We'll go ahead and say copy, edit copy, click up here to switch back to my other document, and I'm going to do edit paste, and it looks like, yeah, I'm going to need to zoom out to find that. It's right here, so I'm going to go ahead and move this over move it into place and it doesn't have to be perfect but it's, it lines up pretty decently so that's good now I still have my proper foreground color so I'm just going to move my cursor right over here and say no and there we have it so let's see if I go ahead and change this percentage to window it's going to show me the full screen and now as you can see, I have an updated mock-up here uh, that I could provide to you, perhaps a stakeholder who can give their buy-in of the change and uh, you know, help me determine if this is the right way to go or if I need to make further changes. Anyway, this is uh, pretty much the procedure I follow to do a basic one-page mock-up of an existing page that I want to make an update to. 
I find that paint.net is very helpful for doing that. Um, you know, when you're done, you can go ahead and do a save and paint.net will give you a number of different options here. I usually go with PNG. Let's just say mock-up, mock-up PNG. And I'll hit save. And I'll just use the default settings here and say OK. I've saved my mock-up and I should be able to go ahead and post that to the web or email it to a stakeholder. So anyway, that's all there is to my simple, quick and dirty mock-up with paint.net. And I hope that you found this video to be helpful. And I would like to wish you good luck in your future software development endeavors.